Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's Daily Word, today, Tuesday, November 23rd. Glad you could join me for our few minutes together as we continue our conversation daily about how Scripture affects our lives and how it calls us to live. Uh, you can see that I'm going to continue to come from the sanctuary as we do our Daily Word. I'm going to be in here all during uh, this season and all during the month of December and come from here as we share in our daily conversation. <clears throat> so based on yesterday's conversation about forgiveness and the difficulty of that, and it's interesting, I had a couple of conversations uh, with folks about what that means and how difficult that is for us. I'm in the midst of life's transitions to forgive those others who've wronged us. And in some cases, um, people who continue to wrong us. And so those are difficult things. And we had some interesting conversations yesterday about that. But I got to thinking about what that means for us um, in the light of Scripture. And Ecclesiastes chapter 3 kind of jumped out at me as something that we could talk about as we live our lives together. So they're familiar words. You know, we, we hear these words. We kind of know some of them by heart. But here are some of these verses from the third chapter of Ecclesiastes. <clears throat> there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, time to embrace and a time to refrain, a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. Skipping a few verses to verse 14. I know that everything God does will endure forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing taken from it. God does this. So I got to thinking about all my conversations yesterday about <clears throat> this idea of forgiveness and the question about how often we should forgive and, and seven times 70 and that highly unattainable number of 490. And that, it's an interesting conversation. So I got to thinking last night and this morning early about the seasons of life that we're in. And you know, for many of us, um, the holidays um, are this season of life, you know, that, that we endure. And for you and for me, you know, holidays are this amazing thing where you eat too much and you share in conversation and you maybe, if you get lucky, you take a nap. Um, think about all these variety of family gatherings that I've been engaged in in my life. One of the things that we always did on Thanksgiving when we would go to mom and dad's, and mom remembers this, we would eat and eat too much, of course, and then everybody would bring their newspapers, and we'd pass around the ads and decide, were well, we going shopping the next day? Weren't we going shopping? Who had the best deals? We might make our Christmas lists at those times. You know, there was a time for all of these things under heaven. And, and the seasons of life are, are much like that. You know, we, we go through all of these seasons of joy and despair, of grief and sorrow. Um, the ability to forgive that we talked about yesterday. And the very difficult times where it seems we just can't forgive no matter what we do. The seasons go for us. But... The writer of Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes reminds us of a lot of things about how life is lived. There is indeed in all of our seasons of life a time for everything. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. We know the words well. Some of them we embrace, 
with all of our being. And we know that those are good seasons and other seasons of our lives are difficult. The seasons of death, the seasons of destruction, seasons of war and hate, seasons where the writer remind us that us that there's a time to tear, seasons that are time to tear down. And those, those are difficult seasons that we live through and even the difficult seasons of forgiveness or trying to find forgiveness and, and trying to live in community. But then there is this stark reminder from the writer of Ecclesiastes that on the other side of this, that there's a time to gather and a time to mend and a time to speak and a time for peace and a time to heal and a time to build and a time to laugh and a time to dance. And all of these various seasons in life come at us, some at, at such fast paces that we can't possibly imagine them and endure them, and they hit us in the face too very fast. Others of them don't come fast enough. And we struggle with what all of these seasons mean. But the writer at the end that I read in verse 14 I think this is what's important for us, especially in this season. I know that everything God does will endure forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing taken away from it. It is God who does this. At therapy this morning, we were talking about the seasons of our lives gathering with family, and, and sometimes that's not always the easiest thing. You know, I, I just revel in those moments when, as a kid, I got to gather with family at my Aunt Vera and Uncle Pearl's house and share in those rich conversations. But life, the seasons of life move on. And now we are here where we are. And it's God, the writer reminds us, it's God who endures forever. And we can't add to it and we can't take away from it. It's God who does this. And so we were talking this morning about living in the moment, you know, taking in all that we have in these moments, reveling in the conversations that we have, you know, finding ways to forgive, or knowing that forgiveness is a long way off yet. Finding ways to live in community, or knowing that the community that we hope for is yet to be realized. It's, it's out there somewhere. Sunday morning, I'm looking at the Advent wreath. Sunday morning, we'll, we'll light the first candle. It's the candle of hope. Hope for some of us is palpable. It's, it's almost within our grasp. For others, hope is way off. We can't even see it yet or hear it coming. God reminds us in this text that everything God does will endure forever. Nothing can be added and nothing taken away. It is God who does this so that we will know. And so friends, in the difficult days that some of us are in, where forgiveness is a long way off, or hope, hope seems distant, where community seems lacking, where, where love feels on the fringes, I think it's during this season and during these days that we look to God and we look to scripture and that it's important that we hear these words. Everything God does will endure forever. We can't add to it and we can't take it away from it. 
from it. I think if we, we chose to live our lives in that way, knowing that, that God, it's God who, who shapes us and, and gives us these days, that during Thanksgiving and the season of Advent, that we would revel in these moments. Knowing that there's a season, a time, a season for everything under heaven. And while some of the things that we hope for in life seem far off, the writer of Ecclesiastes reminds us that the time we're in now, there is a time for the other to come. We trust God in that. So I hope that that gives us something to hold on to in this day, something to know that, to remind us that if if we're searching to forgive, that it, it may be a way off. If we're searching for hope, it may be a ways off. If we're searching for peace in our family and in our community, it, it may be way off, but for everything under heaven, there is a season, and God does this. Hopefully, that's a good word for us today. I hope you'll know of God's love, most importantly, in these days that surround you, and that that never leaves, doesn't change, um, that that's not a season But God's love is a place where we always live. I know of my love for all of you as well. Know that nothing can be taken away from what God has done for us. Know of love and grace and mercy and peace in your lives, my friends. And I will see you tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Have a great day.